Do you still listen to music on cassette tapes? Do you still connect to the internet with dial-up? No? Then why are you still using a data warehouse? The data warehouse had a great run, but it's outdated. It wasn't built for 90% of today's data. It can't handle modern use cases like machine learning. It's time for a new paradigm. The Databricks Lakehouse brings all your data together on one open platform so you can tackle every use case from BI to AI. Discover Lakehouse at Databricks.com. In-app events are your big chance to acquire users or attract existing audiences back to your app. Either way, you have to excite them with creative ideas and events, and we get inspiration and ways you can keep your app top of mind from App Marketing Agency App Radar. All this and more in episode number 448. Welcome to Mobile Presence, your destination for everything mobile. I'm your host, as always, Peggy Ann Saltz, mobile analyst, tech consultant, senior Forbes writer, and founder of Mobile Groove. And we're looking at ASO today, which is the topic for many years, and we've been covering it for that long as well, but it has evolved. It has evolved massively in this year. There are some changes that when you connect the dots in these changes, you're going to understand the direction that you need to take to optimize not only your app landing page, which is where all this started, but app marketing across the funnel. There's a lot to understand, a lot of moving parts, which is why I have purposely chosen our guest to tell us about ASO, the evolution, what you need to know to also succeed in 2022 and beyond. So to take us on this journey, the journey you have to think about as you evolve your app and aim for more sustainable success, basically, because it's not just about acquisition, it's about retention and re-engagement as well. It's a lot more difficult to get and keep your app users. So I've purposely chosen Thomas Knieberneg. He is managing director, co-founder at App Radar, which is a company that's been defining ASO since it started in 2015, since we didn't even have the letters ASO. I remember people saying, oh, should we call it AMO? Because it's app marketing optimization. Uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. He has, as I said, founded App Radar that has a number of awards over the years because it is at the center of apps, app-based services, uh, even extending into e-commerce, digital marketing. It's all about working with companies, primarily games. We're going to hear a lot. I will not keep you, Thomas. You have a lot to share, but tell me a little bit more about App Radar because you have had also a pretty monumental year as well. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Peggy, for having me on the show. A pleasure uh, to meet you again uh, and to, to talk with you again. Uh, we have seen each other already since uh, quite some time. So, yeah, I've been in yes. this industry since quite some time already. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, over here at AppRata, I would say we had a really uh, great start in the year. Uh, we also shared some great news uh, because in the beginning of the year, we acquired uh, one of our competitors, uh, the Tour, uh, which is a Spanish uh, company specializing in the field of app store optimization as well. And yeah, mm -hmm. since the uh, beginning of the year, uh, we, they are, uh, so to say, part of uh, the AppRadar family now, and we have been taking them over. And yeah, so, as you mentioned, yeah, they're a crazy year so far. Uh, also, I would say last year has been quite crazy, uh, and uh, especially this year, and also looking a bit into next year uh, in terms of app store optimization, I think we will see a lot of new stuff coming up, yeah. So there is a lot happening at your company, but also in the wider industry, because we've seen a a flood, I would say, just every day, a different announcement, but not really connecting the dots in those because this is also the year that app marketers have more possibilities to shape how they appear, not only on their landing page, but to market independently. Tell me about the possibilities that they have because I'm not sure every app marketer really realizes what they are able to do and shape. And even if they don't use it to market, they can use it to test. This is significant. Yeah, uh, so I would say uh, on the high level, I probably we can probably sum it up into, we have seen two big changes happening in this year. So on the one hand side, we have the really 
in App Store optimization of your App Store listing. So this is, I would say, where classically App Store optimization kind of has always been. But there has been also a lot of innovation going on, especially also on the side of Apple. Uh, we have seen the release of in-app events just recently, which also gives a good opportunities for people uh, into the field of App Store optimization as well as keyword optimization. So also have now additional possibilities of how they can rank on specific keywords and also gain uh, visibility there within the app stores. Also looking a bit more into the future, we will be seeing the launch of custom store pages within the Apple App Store, which will also give a complete new flood of possibilities to app marketers out there to really be uh, yeah, uh, riding the trend wave in some kind of way and also seeing new possibilities of how to acquire users uh, within their complete uh, user journey, so to say. But also on the other hand, uh, what we have also seen, uh, I would say especially triggered by the law uh, case uh, around Apple versus Epic was the topic that outside of the app store optimization kind of your app uh, and also your app landing page, so to say, becomes also more and more important, especially because uh, both, uh, I would say, major uh, app stores out there uh, will give app developers and app companies the possibility to also get money outside uh, of the app store for the offerings that they're having within their apps. So therefore, mm -hmm. I think uh, on a high level, we see those two trends going up on the one hand side, what's happening within the app store, more and more possibilities. Also, uh, Apple and Google are pushing it very hard to get people there, yeah? And on the other hand side, opening up for what's happening out there in the World Wide Web, uh, which also opens up a complete new world uh, for a lot of app developers out there. It's a lot of freedom. Freedom can be daunting because it was really, you know, it was very restricted. We know that watching it over the years, but now, App marketers, app developers can do a lot more, but they don't have maybe a lot more resources or a bigger team to do it. What do you propose as the priorities? If I'm looking at this and I'm saying, yes, you know, there will be more than the two app stores. Yes, I have my own storefront to maintain. Yes, I can also dig a little bit deeper into the black box that kept me from optimizing ASO on my landing page. Those are my choices. Help me prioritize my resources. Yeah, I, I think that this is one of the, the biggest challenges. Yeah, with a lot of possibilities, there comes also a lot of work uh, that somehow needs to be done. Yeah, and uh, therefore, also a lot of prioritization needs to be done upfront uh, to kind of focus on the most important things uh, where you can also pull or get the most leverage out of it. Yeah? So I think that uh, especially what we are seeing also working together with you know companies of all sizes and uh, what we are seeing, uh, especially looking at the smaller teams at the, the challengers, uh, let's call it like that. Um, for them, I think really the biggest trouble is yeah, that there are that many possibilities and that they simply cannot uh, fulfill the kind of everything that is happening out there. Uh, so therefore, I would also kind of uh, recommend as uh, one of the things still in the end of the day, the app store is where apps are being installed. So it also doesn't matter now. I mean, we can now say you have possibilities to make subscriptions outside of the app store, for example, if you have a subscription based app, uh, but nevertheless, uh, the in-store needs to happen within the app store. So therefore, especially looking at uh, teams at companies where there are limited resources, I would also highly recommend that this should be the center of your focus, especially in the mm -hmm. beginning, because as mentioned, it kind of doesn't matter what kind of marketing activities you do. At the end of the day, people will land in the app store and there they have to download your app. So I think that this should be really the starting point and it should be mm -hmm. also kind of the, yeah, the center, the heart uh, of all the activities. And when you have resources and when you have the possibilities to experiment, I mean, then you can go very uh, creative. Uh, you can become very creative and get very wild, I would say, yeah. And also experiment a lot outside of the app store. So where it really comes into creating specific landing pages for your app, testing, optimizing, closing subscriptions directly on your landing page and stuff like this. Uh, so. Um, but as mentioned, what we are seeing is uh, really cool opportunities, but you also need to be very realistic here that you need also a lot of manpower to get this done. So you need to focus on your landing page first. 
You need to have that sorted. And then you can look at others. And I've talked to marketers who are, as I said, just using it to test. They're not even thinking about, oh, well, my, 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 uh, my storefront is where I'm going to drive installs. They're just saying, no, it's just so I can see what works and what doesn't, and then have sort of a control group. So let's stay on the landing page. So many elements, such a schedule of refresh and rework and test, but it's all moved on. And when things evolve, they're supposed to get easier. So what are the elements that I need to focus on or where can I get a quick win? Is it just keep refreshing your videos because video is king, but, or is it something else? Um, I think um, the most important topic here, and also, you know, Peggy, we have been in this industry since quite some time, yeah, so we have seen uh, it really evolving over the time, and I would say that at the current stage that we are, we are in a very professional uh, stage of uh, where all this landing page optimization, so to say, already went, and also where the topic of app store optimization uh, has gone so far, yeah, so therefore, I think it's really important uh, to have, uh, first of all, this mindset that everything you do there needs to be at a really good quality at a really professional level because otherwise people nowadays entering the app store searching for apps going to different landing pages there of apps they instantly will see if there was work put into this optimizing this page or if there wasn't and maybe they don't see it but they will somehow feel it and subconsciously decide, okay, this doesn't look professional. I'm not going to download this app because there are 10 others that look kind of better optimized or that attract me more. So I think that this is kind of the first base layer that we have to talk about, that it is really about, uh, yeah, making it very professional at the one hand side. Okay, so design, the, basically. Design, yeah, exactly. So it's okay. this first impression. Uh, that you need to nail, yeah. Um, this uh, means uh, this is your app store icon. These are your screenshots. Like you mentioned, this is your preview video. Also there, I mean, it can also depend on uh, if you um, really need to optimize this multiple times or if you can you know, like have an evergreen uh, video that can also uh, run very well. It can also mean uh, that you, for example, don't have to do a preview video. Uh, what we have seen is if your app is very clear to uh, users out there, what your app does. So let's say a calorie uh, counting app, for example, or a, cal a calculator app or something like that. People kind of uh, grasp uh, what the app is about. So there you can, uh, I think it's not needed that you have a preview video, um, but it's about also then testing screenshots and trying to really nail it for your wished target audience. Okay. So that's what I'm doing with my elements. Is there a new shortcut, a new win? Because of course you're working with your customers, just in a nutshell, some idea of something we hadn't thought of before that you see is going to make the difference in the year ahead. Um, I think, uh, in, especially now, uh, looking at uh, just recent events, yeah. Uh, so within the Apple App Store, you now have the possibility to also make in-app events and also promote them mm -hmm. uh, on your App Store listing. Um, the basically the setup uh, looks like that: um, when people have already downloaded your app, they go into the App Store and you have an event running, and they search for, for your app name or they search for a keyword where your app is being listed. They will not see the screenshots of your, of your app anymore, but instead they will see the event that you're currently running or operating within your app. So this gives now a complete new possibility of how you can also attract people who have already installed your app, maybe actively now on their smartphone, but have maybe also installed your app in the past and changed, uh, so to say, in the meanwhile. But this gives now a complete new possibility of how you can try to bring people back uh, because uh, there you uh, have now really the chances to attract people that have already installed your app in the past. And so you have this differentiation between people completely new, never seen your app, never installed your app, compared to people who have already seen your app. And I think this is uh, also a really great opportunity because uh, this uh, can really help you to bring back users, uh, which I think is one of the bigger trends that we will be seeing and uh, are already seeing. Yeah? So it's not only about new installs, but it is also about reinstalls because uh, yeah, smartphones are also now 10 mm -hmm. plus years old. Um, so also chances that you installed an app already in the past are also quite high. Yeah? So this means uh, it is uh, really important uh, to also yeah, um, 
see this as an opportunity and also to optimize for this opportunity. So in a nutshell, an event, what's an exciting example of an event? I, I may not have an event per se, but I can make it look really exciting. Give me an example. Exactly. I, I think the, the easiest, so to say, to grasp are within the mobile gaming space, yeah, where you can say, okay, we have a special character that is only available in this one week and you have to play, you have to gather some points and then you can unlock this special character. So that is something on the gaming side. Uh, on the normal app side, it could be, for example, that you try to build up a community around your event. So let's say you have a sports activity tracking app and you make a special uh, November event uh, where kind of every activity is counted into so the more active you are the more you contribute to the greater core uh, you can also get something out of it so to say so this uh, gives you now really more possibilities in um, I would say engaging your users and uh, ideally also convincing them that you know in the end of the day that they also give you some money by subscribing <laughs> or uh, buying something within your app because huh? <laughs> we're not just doing it for fun but engagement is important engagement is important this is exciting because it and um, we're talking about the opportunities that you have beyond the ones before there's a lot that you can do and that's what we're going to continue with thomas right after the break is you know there is a lot of possibility for creativity for innovation and for just off the wall ideas and i want to hear some of those as well so listeners don't go away we'll be right back after the break. Mobile Presence, sponsored by CleverTap, a leading engagement and retention platform, will be back after this message. Do you still listen to music on cassette tapes? Do you still connect to the internet with dial-up? No? Then why are you still using a data warehouse? The data warehouse had a great run, but it's outdated. It wasn't built for 90% of today's data. It can't handle modern use cases like machine learning. It's time for a new paradigm. The Databricks Lakehouse brings all your data together on one open platform so you can tackle every use case from BI to AI. Discover Lakehouse at Databricks.com. And we are back to Mobile Presence. My guest today, Thomas Krieberneg. He is Managing Director, Co-Founder at App Radar, And we were talking about sort of the next level in ASO. We can look at in-app events. We can optimize them. How often should we be optimizing them? How often should we say, hey, check this out. This is new. Yeah, I, I think a really great question. Yeah, kind of uh, how often do you want to say there is something new happening? So uh, we're also still in the beginning of this phase, I have to say. So it's a lot of tests that need to be made. Yeah, But uh, kind of maybe to give a bit of a high level guideline, uh, how we are also when uh, we are working together with our customers, what we're doing there is we're trying to optimize for one event per month, kind of as a high level. Uh, we're trying to go deeper. Yeah, it can be that there are specific apps out there where it can make sense. Um, just uh, thinking out loud, uh, for example, if you have a content-based app, like for example, Netflix, uh, you can also use those in-app events, uh, especially to promote new shows that are coming up on your, yeah, on your streaming uh, service, so to say, uh, which then gives you the possibility that you can also do this more frequently, for example. So if you have really great shows coming up, you can also promote them once per week, for example. And here comes now already into play, I think really the beauty of uh, in-app events because it is one um, measurement of Apple that Apple wants to give uh, app developers on the one hand side um, and app marketers on the one hand side to have the possibility to promote something within the app store. But also on the other hand side, they also want to keep people coming back to the app store. So this is also very important for the app store itself, Apple in this case, because they want to keep people in there and want to uh, also give them news what is coming up. And so I think that we will be moving more and more towards to this uh, area where you kind of can think of uh, uh, that you have downloaded a lot of apps and you will then be browsing through the events because once you have downloaded Netflix and when you have an account, you don't need to be convinced anymore. So to say, how does Netflix work? How easy it is and, and things like that. Then it's really about what is new. And I think this what is new um, kind of probably also bit of uh, the time that we're living in uh, for us as human beings that we always want to get something new uh, is also probably something that is firing up this trend. So let me understand the user journey for a moment. This is when I'm in the app store and I'm searching for something cool. 
And through my keyword search, I'm going to happen upon the app, but I'm going to be shown the coolest new thing about the app. Exactly, yeah, exactly. You have different possibilities, uh, what you want to promote, so to say. Uh, so it can be on the one hand side, uh, for example, a challenge. So something that is really very limited uh, within the next uh, week, for example, we have a running challenge and let's find out who can run the, the most uh, you know, distance in this time on the one hand side. On the other hand side, you can also promote new really great features that you have been working on. So major updates on your app and really promote them within the app store. So it's not only, I would say probably even it's the next step to the what's mm -hmm. new text uh, because there you can read, uh, okay, there has been a major update and there is a new feature, but now you have the possibility to also promote this as an event and people who have already installed your app. And this is also very important, yeah. So really talking about people who have already installed your app will then, instead of the normal screenshots when they're browsing through the app store or searching for specific keywords, will yeah. instead of the screenshots see the events. And then they see, ah, okay, one of my favorite apps made just a major update and they brought out a new cool feature. I mean, at the end, it's also marketing again. Yeah, so obviously you kind of need to find a good visual, a good creative that also breaks the flow of the people browsing through the app store. But this gives you a really great uh, possibility to bring people in your app and maybe also win people back who didn't start your mm -hmm. app for quite some time. So what I'm hearing here is I need to optimize it for my audience. I need to have an amazing creative. I probably should have a videographer on, on the payroll or have <laughs> one or have one uh, in you know, in-house or an agency. But it looks like if anything ever had to be done, it's thinking about what is going to get people's attention? What are some wild, weird, cool ideas for inspiration here? Because not everyone has it as easy as a game where it's like, hey, we have new characters, come back. We have new levels. We have a new narrative, you know, come back. That's, that's an easy one. Let's take some yeah. hard ones. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, probably looking a bit at uh, e-commerce, probably as uh, one of the harder uh, disciplines, because there are mm -hmm. uh, a lot of competition going on. Also, right. shops tend to sell, you know, you can buy t-shirts, for uh, t-shirts, for example, from different stores. Yeah, uh, but also they are thinking of what you can now do. And yeah, with the help of uh, events, you also have. I mean, we, we talk now about, uh, I would say, the uh, conversion rate optimization. So once people find you, you know, you need to create, uh, you need to have convincing uh, creatives, you need to have good visuals, but also very important uh, with the help of in-app events, you can also rank on keywords. Um, we are still in the beginning phase of it. Mm. Uh, so this means that we will see how much power keywords that you're optimizing your events for will gain over time, so to say. But what we have seen so far is that they are getting actually quite good power as well from the Apple App Store. Mm -hmm. So when you're optimizing for keywords, and now let's come back to the e-commerce example. So you brought up, uh, let's say you have an e-commerce store and you have a new collection of uh, cool t-shirts. Yeah, uh, Let's say uh, NFT inspired uh, t-shirts uh, that, okay. you, yeah, that you're bringing up. Yeah. Um, meta meta t-shirts, Thomas. Yeah, exactly. Me <laughs> meta t-shirts. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> Real life 3D meta t-shirts. Okay. <laughs> um, and you know, uh, what you can do by that is uh, you can uh, bring up events and say that you have this new collection out there. And then it's about, you know, like uh, bringing in a little bit of keywords as well. And I think, you know, NFTs, uh, screenshot, uh, NFTs, uh, t-shirts, meta as well, you know, new uh, okay. trending and stuff like this, you know, you, you, I think you can grasp where this is going yeah. towards too. It's all going uh, so you, in the same direction, all toward that one keyword. Exactly, exactly. And then you can really uh, try, you know, also to sneak in, I would say, in kind of uh, also traffic, yeah? Because on the one hand side, you also have the possibilities to also optimize for keywords that you don't have within your metadata of your app, yeah? Because it isn't, you know, like the, the, the center of it or the core, so to say, of the keywords you want to optimize. But it can be something, you know, that just makes sense also, as I mentioned, a special promotion or something like that, uh, where you can also push additional oh. space, additional characters. Uh, and you mm -hmm. can also, in the end of the day, uh, rank for more keywords out there and uh, gain more visibility within the App Store. Makes total sense. And it's about engaging audiences. That's about getting our attention that always seems to be the easier 
part of the equation because we have to engage audiences. We also have to, uh, I would say enamor is the word I was thinking of. You know, really have to please, you have to cater to the algorithm because you can have the best quality app and the coolest accompanying content, but gotta nail the keywords that it seems to love. And that changes almost, I don't know, daily, Thomas. What, what, are some, what are some changes? I mean, we'll stay white hat here. Mm -hmm. What can we do? What are some changes to keep in mind? What's the impact? What is this challenging us to do? Yeah, I think uh, what, what we have seen uh, over the last uh, years, I mean, uh, you already spoke about it, yeah, white hat, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, black hat uh, techniques that uh, stopped working, I would uh, say, yeah, because also the app stores itself, the algorithms grew up yes. in some kind of way, yeah. Uh, so therefore, uh, I think you, what we now have is, uh, to be brutally honest, yeah, crazy competition going on within the app stores, yeah, because we have uh, so many apps, uh, the level of uh, professional apps is growing, and also the competition on keywords is growing, yeah, so therefore, I think it is really about nowadays that you really have to do this on a very, very professional level and also use tools, uh, for example, like AppRadar, that help you analyzing your visibility on your main keywords uh, so that you really, first of all, identify them. And uh, second, you really want to fight for them because you want to rank for them. And the uh, chances that you have to be on the white uh, uh, hat optimization side is uh, especially in the Apple App Store, but also on the Google Play Store, the value that the algorithms give reviews out there has been growing mm. significantly over the last time yeah so in the beginning so looking back five years i would say it was only about downloads yeah the, the, the one who had the most downloads was the one who was ranking for the most keywords it was really that simple uh, nowadays it is more about uh, reviews uh, so the one who is getting the most reviews within the app store it will be ranking on more keywords uh, especially if those keywords are also contained within the reviews uh, which is also uh, yeah, a good signal uh, to the um, to the algorithm that uh, this keyword kind of seems to be relevant mm -hmm. uh, for your app out there and I think uh, for app marketers, uh, what it's you know, it's it's hard on the one hand side, yeah. How can you influence people that they bring keywords that you want to rank for within uh, reviews without paying for it? Which I also highly recommend that you don't do that because both app stores will figure this one out, and uh, this can end very very bad for your app. Uh, but uh, kind of as, as marketing is also a bit of manipulating uh, what people have on their mind. Uh, you can also try to already pre-frame reviews. Uh, so for example, if you think of uh, how do you like your app, uh, it would be great if you give us five stars versus how did you like your running experience with our app? Was it great for you? Uh, would be great if you could rate your running experience and on the app store, you know, then kind of you already giving some words uh, into the minds of people reading this and chances are that you will get running experience within your review. So I think this is the very subtle art of uh, marketing uh, that we're talking here about, yeah. um, but you have some chances, uh, chances, yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's an exciting time, Thomas, because now creativity is back. It's not just about, yeah, I wouldn't say gaming the algorithms, but I did say that. Um, it's not about that. <laughs> There's creativity. There's a chance there are some simple shortcuts, just as, for example, how to create really cool in-app events, how to get people to give you revenues, uh, reviews rather, that are focused on where you want to generate your revenues in your app is what I wanted to say. So keywords that feed into the bottom line and what you're there for in the first place. And speaking of that, where can we catch up with you? Where are you present out there? Where might we be able to connect with you or also with AppRadar? What's the best place? Maybe you're blogging, maybe you're really active out there, offering a couple master masterclasses. What's the option here? I think the easiest way how to find us is uh, on YouTube. Uh, we're pushing also quite a lot of educational content around app marketing. So kind of cool. for everybody starting out in this area, highly recommend uh, subscribing AppRadar on YouTube. Um, mm. We're very active there. 
Also on our blog, uh, we're sharing a lot of information. We also have an App Store Optimization Academy as well as an App Store Advertising Academy on our website, which is completely free and uh, goes from uh, beginner lessons over to very advanced and expert lessons. So you can learn, I would say, nearly everything there. I mean, we're keeping some tricks for ourselves, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can really learn a lot there. And uh, I would also say in person, uh, I mean, now looking at the situation, yeah, uh, coronavirus is a thing, yeah, and it's uh, unfortunately kind of not uh, going to end that soon, uh, at least it looks like that, but uh, let's hope the best and let's hope that the uh, live events uh, will take place uh, and the next one uh, where I at least have a ticket and also booked a flight for is uh, the App Promotion Summit in Berlin, beginning mm -hmm. of December. Yes where I will also be in person, where we also have a workshop together with one of our clients, where we're also going to show, uh, going to show some tricks uh, that you can do how to successfully launch a new app and uh, really get the most out of it. So that would be, I would say, the next possibility to also catch me in person. Well, keeping in mind that you're educating the industry, keeping in mind that you had that cool workshop about how to launch a new app, and many people might be thinking about exactly that in the new year, I'll have you back, Thomas, to talk about that. We can't, maybe we can't come to Berlin, but we'll bring Berlin to our audience. I want to thank you, Thomas, for sharing. It's been so helpful to have some straightforward, practical tips. That's what matters here. That's why we have you. That's why I'll have you back. So thanks again so much for being on Mobile Presence. Thank you very much, Peggy. It was a pleasure. And of course, if you want to keep up with me throughout the week, find out more about how you can be a guest or sponsor on Mobile Presence, then you can email me, Peggy, Peggy at mobilegroove.com, which is where you can also find my portfolio of content marketing and app marketing services. You can check out this in all earlier episodes of our show by going to wmr.fm, or you can find our shows on Amazon, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, of course simply by searching mobile presence. So until next time, remember, every minute is mobile, so make every minute count. Keep well, stay safe, and we'll see you soon. The opinions expressed on this program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of WebmasterRadio.fm's management or sponsors. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without authorized consent of WebmasterRadio.fm is prohibited. Does everyone need customer support today? We've got you. Intercom has the tools to manage support at any scale, like integrations, bots, and more. All in one powerful platform. We'll even automatically resolve 33% of your support volume, so you have more time for customers who need you most. Oh, that's better. Supercharge your team's productivity and make your customers super happy with Intercom. Learn more at intercom.com slash support. My go-to order at Skyline has always been a regular three-way and cheese coney. But today, I made the switch to five-way. Those hearty beans and diced onions took it to another level. From now on, I'm a Skyline 5-Way guy.